Welcome to Never a Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and today we're going to share with you the legendary Green Brick of Joy. Uh, the Naniwa Green Brick of Joy has been around for more than a minute. Um, you can see it's two and a half times bigger than what you're used to, and it rates in at, at about a 2,000 grit. It's supposed to be your, your one-stop shop, your one stone, the only stone that you'll need for sharpening and polishing. Um, this mid-grit, it's, it's rather large. And it needs a little bit of soaking is what I'm told. So we've already had it in the water a little bit. Um, you can see it has the lobster logo that kind of tells us in the lobster series. From what I've heard, it's really a series all its own. So I'm gonna let that finish soaking. Uh, so we're gonna put it to the test. Um, I have definitely sharpened with natural stones things around the 2000 grit. It does take a little longer, obviously. So I think if you're a person who sharpens your knives all the time, this would definitely could be amazing just the one stone that you need to kind of keep things up we for you today are going to sharpen the masamoto ks white steel number two 240 millimeter gyoto um, so this knife gets a lot of use around here um, if you go back and look in my early videos before we had nice lighting and a good microphone you'll see a lot of videos where i get this thing really sharp it's got a nice patina on it definitely its own thing the reason I want to use this knife is I am used to this knife. I am used to how long it takes to sharpen, how it feels. So I wanted to be familiar with something when I used it on this stone. Um, to first get started, this is not a sharpening video. I, am, I might make a couple of notes, but this is to test out the stone and give you feedback. I have not used the stone yet. Literally came out of the box, went in the water just before we start, shot this. So let's go ahead and get a quick best test to get a score, see what it's doing. All right, so we've got to tear it out. And I think we're getting it all zoomed in. Are we ready to go? Thank you very much. All right, so 213 means the knife is pretty sharp. Um, so, Let's go ahead and just use it and see what we can do. I mean, at 2000 grit, we should definitely be able to hone this. Um, we're not going to go over the definition between honing and sharpening. For those of you who know, you know, um, just a quick note, honing, it would be more like taking something that's a little bit uh, gotten out of line. Okay, so this, this stone can be used for honing your knife, sharpening your knife, polishing your knife. Okay, in a way, we're going to be doing all three. Um, so let's go ahead and and get this bad boy up here. Since I have never used it, I don't know if it's flat. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick just to get a little bit of a slurry. Definitely got initially a little stickiness to it. Okay. I'll get my wife over there to hand me a pencil if she sees one real quick and we'll test out to make sure it's flat. For those of you who do not know what flattening is, that's a different video altogether. But um, the goal here is to make some lines quickly and run this plate over it. If it's flat, they'll all come off. And if it's not flat, the lines will stay in the low spots and they all came off. So that's a good sign. All right. Okay, so we'll clean that later. Let's get everything all lined up. Okay, so it is not an extremely hard. I mean, it's definitely on the harder side. It's like the hard side of medium, I would say. Definitely feels like it's on the polishing end. It doesn't feel as slick as the uh, 3000. It definitely is giving me some feedback. 
And if you have a chance, you can probably see that there's already some, um, some slurry, some dark lines in the stone. So remember, if this is your one-stop shop, that means I will not be like making a burb like flip back and forth over multiple stones and then ripping it off. The goal would be to get the bevel and created and ripped off on the one stone. I mean, if that's what we're talking about. I can tell you that the stone feels really nice. Like I said, it is slick. It's not glass, but it has a glassiness that's nice. Um, the Sahira 8K obviously is much more refined. It should be at 8,000K. Um, definitely, uh, you know, it's kind of silent, which is great. But I mean, I feel, I feel the stone, which I think that you would on a, on a sharpening stone. You know, if you don't know that 2K is, it straddles the line of sharpening. I mean, it, it, it's that place where people could argue, are you really sharpening a knife or not when you're at the 2000? Um, it's definitely nice to have this humongous stone. I mean, that's a micro bevel. That's beautiful. The fact that I got a bevel consistent and even um, so unlike what I did on the last whetstone review, I decided to turn this upside down to keep the logos intact. So if the end to end writing is upside down, I don't know it. I'm sh I don't know which side is right side up with this. Um, you guys can definitely leave comments, but, uh, I decided to preserve the logos that would be on the stone. So, you know, we did soak this at two to three minutes. I have not had to put any more water on it. I think you haven't seen me. The slurry is still there. I'm still working off the initial. So if I was just doing maintenance on this knife, technically I'm done. I mean, if I'm just doing maintenance, we've just made a little bit of a micro bevel on one side, micro bevel on the other. I mean, definitely micro bevel there. Yeah, okay. So this is our one stone thing. So we need to do some edge leading strokes. You know what's nice is a big stone and this is a big knife. And I feel like I have, you know, plenty of work area. I don't, it went right in on this stone holder, which means that its size is the standard size of most stones. It's not unusually long or unusually short. Again, humongous. I mean, it should last you a long time. So if you're, if you've purchased a sharp knife recently and you are into maintenance and you know how to sharpen, this could be the one stone for you. Um, if you don't need some super high bright polish, you don't mind it slightly hazy, you just need a functional knife. This might be the one thing you keep in the kitchen that's a uh, handy. So. Again, I'm pushing edge leading at the angle that I was sharpening. The goal is to, to help remove any metal. Now, there's a trick that people do, and there's a big argument. Do I um, take a cork or some type of wood and run the edge of the knife through it to remove the burr? The argument actually is that as you take the edge of the knife and put it on the wood and pull through that the a little bit of metal rips off, piles up, and the rest of the blade, something this long, would actually go through the metal piling. Okay, so we're not gonna do that because the argument is, can I do everything I need to do on this stone to maintain this knife? Um, you might actually go horizontal and pull through and see if that gets any metal off. Now, because this is below 8K, you technically could be done with your edge leading strokes. Um, if you wanted to, I'm not going to argue with you. You know, there's plenty of people that want to do a stropping technique. So now we're edge trailing. Again, we're, uh, we're not making a burr at this point. The weight of my hand 
is all this knife is feeling. It's literally as if it's just sitting there and I'm pulling it. I'm just resting this hand on it. Okay. So, I mean, the slurry is still there. The stone feels great. Um, it definitely gave me feedback. This company is known for that. Um, it's nice that it only had to soak for three to five minutes and it didn't have to be in there for 20 to 30 or longer. So if you did need to sharpen your knife before you, you could get it done. So, uh, we're done already. Can you believe that? Let me make sure I do not cut myself as I try to clean anything. Um, I think my wife's going to come over and get a quick close up of the edge. So you can see that there is a shiny edge to the knife. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and get this cleaned up. I know everyone loves to see shit cut up. So yes, I said the word, sorry. <clears throat> so let's cut something up. Where are we going? Oh yeah, you know, my, so this is why you're married, okay? We can't get everything right. My wife said, no, put her foot down. <laughs> the wife is laughing, giggling. We're gonna best test first, then we'll do some cutting up. Okay, so that means, and if you guys don't know, you know, you have to undo this. I have to reload it. Now listen, I don't need to, you know, people commenting, you can comment all you want. I'm never going to block you from commenting. It does take a second to reload this. There is a way to do it where you add a weight to it and get the same tension. For video's sake, I do not have that kind of time. Uh, everyone's enjoyed like the raw and edited. So I had been using reusable media. It was pointed out that the reusable media, the other ones were not best certified. This is best certified. This takes tension that I apply. So we're, that's what we're going with. I mean, you saw me live on camera, you know. Okay, so let's see what we got. So we, for the record, we did not strop this, okay? So I might have not gotten the burr off with this. I know that, you know, I did just technique rapidly for the one stop shop. We did not put it on leather. We did not put it on diamond emulsion. So whatever we get, we get, and I can live with that, but it could be that there's still a burr either to my bad technique or the fact that 2000 was a little too polished to remove the burr. And that's the point of the test. I don't remember I'm asking my wife, is that a better score? That's a better score. It's, oh, it's below 200. I believe we were over 200. So we improved on the knife and that means if we had, if we're just doing our weekly maintenance, then, um, then we got it done. So I'm going to back up. <sighs> now we get to cut stuff up. Okay. So let's see if we can hear any spots on the knife. By the way, if you don't know this guy, I'll put a link in the um, YouTube. Uh, he was nice enough to send me some leather straps. He has an amazing channel. Uh, you do need to click subtitles unless you speak German. Um, so this was a nice note that was included in the straps. And uh, you know what? I'll hold it up for you guys to read real quick. An amazing gentleman. You guys can pause the video if you need to read that better. So we're listening for like, um, so we, it just, it did it. So we don't feel any glitches or tears. Now that might've been one, but that was at the paper. So right at the same spot, 
right? The same spot. So this is what it's for, right, folks? This is my one-stop shop. I'm using nothing else on this knife. That's the goal. If I've got a little spot on the blade and this is the only thing in the house, Now, this was a pretty quick honing slash sharpening today. Obviously, you guys are probably bored with some of my longer videos. Hopefully, we can keep your attention span today. So, we got rid of the, the spot. So, for me to just tell you that if you definitely have weekly maintenance this is a great stone uh this is an inexpensive stone it's under 100 dollars. i think it was around 75 dollars um could have been a little bit less um depending on where you buy it i'll put a couple of links i think chef knife to go has it um sharpeningsupplies.com who i absolutely love who i got my best tester from uh they have it some other sites but i think 75 is the low 79 i might have seen on the web so if you just need the one, there you go. The company is legendary. Nanawa, the Green Brick of Joy is legendary. You get to say you own one. That's awesome. Links in the description. This was definitely not a dull moment. Appreciate you being here. Have another week. Bless you guys. We're out.